Let's get busy! When you think of classic arcade game developers, who springs to mind? Capcom, SNK, Sega. What about Ira? If the name doesn't sound familiar, I bet you that the games will. Ira was behind such classics as Moon Patrol, R-Type, and Kung Fu. While the actual amount of games released by IRAM isn't staggering, what members of the company went on to do has left a lasting impact on both arcade games and the video game industry as a whole. Join me on this episode of Push Start as we dig a little deeper into IRAM. Kenzo Sujimoto had a dream to be involved in the game and entertainment industry. So in 1969, he started a cotton candy machine business out of a retail store in Osaka, Japan. With the success of the store, Mr. Sujimoto formed IPM Company Limited, or International Playing Machine, a take on IBM, in 1974. The goal of the company was to make arcade machines for small stores in Japan. In 1978, the company launched its first title, a clone of Space Invaders entitled IPM Invader. The next year, the company changed its name to IRAM Corporation and started pumping out largely forgettable arcade titles until they struck it big with Moon Patrol in 1982. Moon Patrol, now looked upon as a classic of the early 80s arcade scene, was a smash. Though in America, fans may link the game with Williams as IRAM licensed the game to them for North American distribution. The game was ported to multiple home computers and game consoles, and is available on everything from the Commodore 64 to the Nintendo Switch. Next on the list of recognizable releases are Ten Yard Fight and Kung Fu Master. Ten Yard Fight may be remembered to retro collectors as one of the original sports titles on the NES, as the port launched alongside the system in 1985. Kung Fu Master is a decent, albeit generic beat-em-up, that in Japan was released as a tie-in to the Jackie Chan film Wheels on Meals. The game's plot, however, has nothing to do with Meals, Wheels, or Jackie Chan. Instead, you're karate kicking an endless stream of apparent members of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. Once again, Irem found themselves with a successful port on the NES, where the game was simply renamed to Kung Fu. We have to fast forward a few years until the next big hit from Irem, as they released R-Type in 1987. This is one of the first shooters I remember playing as a kid, though I don't think I've actually ever played the arcade version of the game. I was exposed to it through the great TurboGrafx-16 port. R-Type launched multiple sequels and created a legacy as one of the pillars of the classic shooter pantheon. If you've been following along, you'll notice that we've had some large gaps in between successful games for IRM. It's not that they weren't releasing games during this time, but they weren't financial hits for the company. This would be a driving factor for many of its employees jumping ship. The first big loss for IRM was when its founder, Mr. Sujimoto, started up a side company in 1979 conveniently called IRM Corporation. By 1983, following dismal sales back at IRM, he was ousted from the company and replaced by Tetsushi Takashima, who was the president of Nanao. Nanao was the company that partnered with IRM to manufacture the CRT monitors for their arcade cabinets. Mr. Sujimoto didn't wait long, however, to unleash the next chapter in his story, and it was a big one. In 1983, he started a company named Capcom, and the rest, as well for another episode. As we head into the early 90s for IRM, the games are still coming, but memorable titles are few and far between. We have Hook, based on the Robin Williams film of the same name, and a hell of an underrated beat-em-up. In 1993, we got the last two big releases from IRM, Ninja Baseball Batman and In the Hunt. Ninja Baseball Batman lives on mostly for being a game with a silly title that pops up in hidden arcade gem lists online. However, it's a fantastic beat-em-up with crazy art design and certainly warrants a playthrough. Seriously, look at this game. This is what mothers think happened when you take drugs. In the Hunt, a solid horizontal shooter bears a striking resemblance to a legendary arcade franchise, Metal Slug. Why? Because of Nazca. Nazca Corporation, formed in 1994, was made up of ex IRAM employees, upset with how the company was seemingly winding down game development. During their time at IRAM, they were responsible for such graphical masterpieces as Gun Force 2, Air Duel, and In the Hunt. 
The games looked incredible, but also played great. They set themselves far apart from the other offerings from IRM at the time. Nazca didn't last long on their own, and were absorbed by SNK in 1996. The team was responsible for, as far as we know, Metal Slug 1, 2, and 3, and Neo Turf Masters. Due to many Japanese developers having to use pseudonyms to prevent poaching, it's tough to tell exactly what games the team members worked on. Plenty of Nazca employees have found success in the video game industry following the bankruptcy of SNK in 2001, which ultimately dissolved the team. Members have worked on games of the Final Fantasy and Street Fighter franchises. The most well-known former Nazca employee would have to be Atsushi Inaba. Mr. Inaba co-founded Clover Studios with Resident Evil legend Shinji Mikami, and now acts as the head producer at Platinum Games. Mr. Inaba has worked on huge titles like Devil May Cry, Phoenix Wright, Beautiful Joe, Okami, and Bayonetta. One other team split from IRAM as well. In 1988, ICOM was founded by a group of ex-IRAM and Jellico employees. They develop games mostly for the home console and have a few titles you may have heard, like The Legendary Axe, Vice Project Doom, and Polestar. They later transitioned into a studio named Yumakobo and produced titles mostly for the Neo Geo Pocket Color in the late 90s and early 2000s. IRAM released their last game as the IRAM Corporation in 1997. Following this, they were absorbed into a larger development department by an NNO. The IRAM name still is on to this day, though it's now focused on pachinko machine development, kind of bringing everything full circle. It's a fairly common story for Japanese developers of the 80s and 90s. They hold out for as long as they can, but soon enough they've been absorbed and divided too many times to count. So, where does IRAM stand in the grand web of classic arcade game developers? Going solely on the weight of their titles, probably somewhere in the middle of the pack. They had some classics, but mostly pumped out games too few and far between and of a quality best forgotten about. However, their impact on the video game industry is immeasurable. Talent seeded in IRAM went on to work on some of the biggest games of all time, and its members have founded companies we now think of as staples in video game development. To me, IRAM is worth exploring. Do some research, check out games like In the Hunt, Undercover Cops, and if you somehow haven't already played it, R-Type. I think you'd be glad that you did. This wraps up this episode of Push Start. I want to thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next time.